Welcome to Q's workshop. Uh, today I'm finishing off the ER32 lathe collar chuck. Uh, so there's a lot of machining going, going in today. But before we get started, let's quickly recap the previous video. Uh, so I cleaned up uh, the outer diameter uh, to get a smooth surface, a measurable surface, and uh, then removed the collar chuck uh, turned it around, bolted it back in different bolt holes uh, just to see if it was going to remain concentric, uh, which it didn't. And uh, that then led me to check what the fit was of the recess to the actual back plate of the, of the lathe. And there was play on that. And because of that play, every time I fasten it to the back plate, it's sitting in a different position, which means that it, there is a run out on it. Uh, that was obviously no good. Uh, so I cleaned up the register and recut it, hit the dimensions that I needed to, and it fits a lot better now. All right, so back to this video. Uh, a lot of material needs to be removed, uh, which I've highlighted in orange there. Uh, to create uh, the M40 thread uh, that's required uh, for the collet nut. So that's what I'm going to cut out first. Uh, then I will move over to the actual through hole and uh, the cutting of the taper for the collets to sit in. You'll also see some measurements in red, and that's where I've overshot my original values. Uh, so I just made a note of those that I can take it into consideration for any uh, future work. All right, so let's kick off with the machining. Here is a montage of me just cleaning up um, the bulk of the material. Right now that we've got it down to where we need it, uh, the next operation is the threads. Uh, full disclosure, I've already cut some threads on a sacrificial piece of aluminium just to make sure I can get the order of operation correct. 
and I'll upload a separate video showing how I did that and things that I took into consideration. Uh, so I start off by marking where I'm cutting the threads and that just gives better visibility of the scratch pass uh, that I can measure it against the thread gauge to make sure I'm cutting the, cor uh, the correct pitch uh, of thread. Scratch pass. You can check if the scratch pass lines up. Yes, it does. You can actually feel the the thread gauge fitting fits into those into the grooves. So that's good. Let's go first feed in. reached 40 on compound slide gauge so I'm just going to give it a test there we go that fits on gets a little tight over there so it's not perfect yet but it does feel a little bit tight so I'm going to give it a little bit more give it another check to take off but okay and that fits on good doesn't really have play on it I probably was lucky I just hit it in the right place uh, the compound slide went to 42 basically the same as the aluminium uh, but that fits on good I'm happy with that
could have been a little tighter, but couldn't have asked for anything better. Let's just clean up this edge. Alright, so it's now time to drill the hole through. Uh, this ultimately forms the holder of the collet. Um, I noticed that I forgot to put it on the drawing, but it's 24 uh, millimeters in diameter. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple of passes with different size drills uh, and then use a boring bar to take it up to, up to size. Right, so the bore is through, uh, hit that dimension uh, pretty well. Next up is to cut the collet seat. 
and it needs to be cut at an 8 degree angle. Uh, so as you can see, that it's 16 degrees in total, um, but just 8 degrees cutting angle. So I've done some research to check how I can get this angle uh, as close as possible, um, mainly because I don't trust the gauge that I've got on my comp compound slide. Uh, so this was the best way that I could, could find, is using an existing uh, collet holder. And uh, I luckily I've got an MT3 collet holder. I put that into my tail stock and I'm now calibrating the compound slide to be perfectly parallel uh, with the angle on uh, the collet holder. Right, there's very little movement on the gauge, so I'm happy with that. And let's move over to the cutting. I noticed by feeding with the compound slide, uh, there was a bit of play on it. Um, so I fastened up uh, the gib strip a bit. Uh, but you can actually hear as I'm moving in and out on, on this next piece that there's actually some play on it. Right, we're targeting 32 millimeters, uh, so we're pretty close now. Um, so just going to give another one light pass to take off the last, uh, the last little bit, and then uh, clean the inside up with uh, some emery cloth, just to make it nice and smooth.
and that actually all fits together quite nicely uh, fastened it just by hand there and it actually feels pretty tight uh, I was considering fastening it up with the with the spanner but uh, I'll, I'll rather just try that out once I'm once I'm finished with it uh, but that all goes together quite nicely all right now it's over to the mill uh, just to drill a hole uh, on the side and and this is for a type of pry bar just to give you some leverage on the collar chuck when it's in the lathe and um, you need to loosen uh, the collet bolt on the front I'm using some wooden blocks to hold it there that I don't damage the surface finish uh, not the most rigid setup but luckily I'm not doing any any heavy milling or, or, or drilling into it and uh, just taking it slow Uh, I realized that I used too short a mill bit, so I just dropped a, a longer one in. Right, so there it's done. Uh, the only other thing I did is run it on uh, the buffing wheel a bit, just to give it a good surface finish. Uh, the collet seat I cleaned up a bit more while on the lathe, uh, just with a very fine uh, emery paper, just to make sure that it's it's got a nice seat in the inside. I've added a few clips here on the end of the end product and comparing it against uh, the 3D printed uh, mock-up of it. Uh, but thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.